Regional Finals, where I'm joined once again by Mark. Plus, we have the disguised toast, the disguised toast here with us uh, to close out this leg of the competition. How are you feeling today? Feeling good. Uh, you know, a couple of days ago, I came eighth place at the tournament. So I took a day off to be depressed. Mm -hmm. But now I'm back and uh, no, happy again. Yeah, I heard you You said you streamed a little bit to go get some wins. Yeah, you know, I just went on my, like, Iron Force Smurf. <laughs> just, like, stomped some kids. It's like, okay, yeah. I still got it. I'm still worthy. Take out the aggression. Uh, well, let's, like, uh, let's have a look at who has survived to the final round of competition for the Littles. Sneaky, Clid, Saros, Levi, Solo, Teal Feeder, Whippo, and the Shy. Quite the group that we have, actually. And... Visually, just from yesterday, the second group of Littles yeah. seemed to have a lot of sleeper OP players that were previous challengers in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's actually whittling down to some very good players now, too. Even, even the pros, like Saros and the Shy were both making pretty good decisions in the mid and late game, mm -hmm. which I think is like where you see a lot more inexperienced show. So they were both impressive. Plus, Whippo just beat the Shy in 1v1s, and now they're competing <laughs> in the TFT Littles as well. The multi-game dominance. Yeah, we'll see if we can do it. Back to smiles on his face, even after that hard loss. Honestly, that was a hard loss in the 1v1s. You were mad. I, I was pretty mad for him because he had a two-level lead. Uh, Bupo made the comeback with the experience on the cannon and was able to finish it off. But let's get into the TFT for it. What's your personal uh, order for first carousel items for wait, wait, Inferno map? Mm, right now, the meta is Phantom Dancer and Morello. So you really want to just prioritize one of those four possible items. Uh, Morello, because there's so much healing. It's Woolen Druid and Phantom Dancer because it's just the most OP item in the game. It's getting nerfed next week. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I knew, I know everyone liked Renekton, but I didn't realize because uh, healing debuff reductions don't apply to him. So when you get a three star and he does this spin yep. that heals for 800, just always getting that. Yeah, he's also getting removed. I mean, he's he's also, uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of one cost units that you look for to hold those items. Like you're talking about these priority items. Mm -hmm. Uh, things like Nasus that have AoE when he ults uh, can hold Morellos and stuff early on uh, as well. So trying to get those ASAP. One thing I saw some people on Reddit talking about a lot was Olaf. Uh, but I wasn't sure. I feel like that's kind of aged out. Yeah, I thought that was like a little bit ago. Because Olaf got nerfed. Um, plus, it's kind of hard to position Berserkers, I feel like. For later, it's easier for people to separate their DPS and kind of block Berserkers. Yeah, Olaf is one of the few counters to Renekton because um, he can permafreeze him once he gets going. Mm -hmm. The problem with Olaf is he loses to the other meta comp, which is Singe, and like you just see your Olaf chasing the Singe. <laughs> yeah. I around. like I like that the meta comp is Singed. Yeah, just Singe. <laughs> Singe with Morellos. Yeah, I've seen people just like put in the Singe with zero poison and yep. yeah, go carry. You think you can beat Zed? The Olaf, if he's itemized correctly, or you think the perma... Because it's he's single target, so I don't see how... Like, you might get a trade mm -hmm. at best. Yeah. Like, a, a draw. Olaf's not very good right now, unfortunately. Like, the whole Berserker package from the beginning has always been a little subpar, even after multiple buffs. The best thing about Olaf was Six Glacier, like his other trade, not his Berserker trade. Right. I feel pretty happy with the state of the meta in set two, though. Yes. Like, sacrificing... Glacials, Berserkers, and Olaf stuff for the success of so many other comps actually feels pretty good. Yeah. And, and like, the things always go in, in little cycles, so even though uh, I don't think anyone wants to go light right now, Ascara did say he thought light, <laughs> light was good in a certain situation, but... Well, it is getting buffs uh, on the next patch and adding more champions. Yeah, who, who is your little... Um, I don't think we actually, I don't think you, you get, get one? paired up okay. if you come bottom four. <laughs> first day. Oh, they want to listen okay. to you? <laughs> Thanks for like the top four people. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't get one. But if I was to choose one, I'd probably choose Sneaky. Good choice, yeah. good choice. Well, let's see what he's working on right now. Hmm. A lot of Vladimir's. Uh... <laughs> Might be thinking about Ocean Mages. Always good. I feel like you want to... Checking to see what items he can build. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Always a promising sign. <laughs> we had a couple theories of, of trying to determine how good people were at the game. Jat was a big believer in just looking at people's APM. Mm. The higher your APM uh -huh. is, the better he thinks you are at TFT. So honestly, if you're looking at people who are learning the game, if they're decisive and they're clicking the their purchases out of the shop first, at least that means they know where they're going, right? And that's mm. a good sign. Yeah. In Sneaky's position there, you had two Warwicks in the shop. Would you find a way to fit those onto your bench? Because I feel like just keeping yourself open to Predators is... Yeah, uh, definitely. Like, hyper-roll Predators, 
uh, was the strategy Beckup ended up winning with day one. But you have to really scout to make sure no one else is going it, because if two players are going Predators, you're both going to bottom out here. Or make some deals. Uh, make some deals there. I you think... get the Skarner. Clid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he got level two Maokai, but no other Woodland Druids. So it's going to go for the two stars. Yeah, early on it's just like if you can't get any synergy, just put in two stars. Put in two stars. Ooh, with that Renekton two looking real good. Also decent electrics. That's an early volley bear yeah. too, uh, and holding on to an Orn. Yeah, and he actually leveled too to uh, get that in to get the other warden. Yeah, how often do you actually level early? Because uh, I feel like, like it's dead. it's insanely rare now. Uh, I think so much people enjoy hyper rolling, like whether it's lights, predators, yeah. woman druid. You really do not want to level to maximize your odds. Um, so. I feel like even if you're not in one of the hyper roll strategies like Ocean Mage, you still just want like pure econ to get to eight, so then you can you know do your rolling. Yeah. So like even then people aren't spending early levels because you don't care about the damage. You just want to get to 50 econ immediately. So I, I feel like early leveling is, is pretty pretty dead. From Sarah's position though, uh, Woodland Druids pretty versatile. Ooh, Rex I upgrade. Got Rex and another Warwick. Levi was one of the ones uh, from the second group who I think looked pretty good, right? I feel like or he was the first group. I feel like he was the one that went shadow, the uncontested shadow, but maybe not. I forget. Here we have Solo Gasang, who is probably the highest rated player here. Um, he played in the Red Bull Invitational, you know, challenger level. Knows what he's building. He's got a Morello on his Zyra already, too. Should probably be the favorite, I think, in this lobby, but I said that about. Lothar should do pretty well yesterday, and he got seven. So, I mean, Zyro this early with Morellos is one of my favorite carries in the entire game, even for the entire duration of the game, too. So he's definitely set up with a very good early start. Uh, Teo Feeder, I think he's an Infernal. Uh, he, he also did really good in the second group as well. He was the one with the Zed, yeah. with the pretty much perfect items. He had Phantom Dancer, uh, Dragon Claw Redemption, I think. It's pretty good. I hate going into the carousels for these, not uh, not, not knowing having, what they have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not knowing the items that are on bench because you don't know what to, to look for. I see one person flicking back and forth trying to see what he wants. But I think um, everyone would just try and look for some Phantom Dancers and some Morello. Yeah. I feel like armors are actually pr pretty good. Uh, once you get down uh, you know, to the end of the carousel, too, don't feel too bad about getting one of those. We did see a ton of Zephyrs in the little lobbies. Because I feel like Zephyr on this is, is relatively easy to use. Uh, mm -hmm. You just kind of build it and stick it on one of the units you're going to put in a hex tile. Yeah. So I, I, th I felt there was someone who had like three or four yesterday uh, by himself. <laughs> I think that's a little excessive, but sometimes <laughs> you get a I'm lot not, of belts. I'm just saying, I saw a lot of people with Negatrons on their bench as well. So. And we saw a couple games are actually won by a good Zephyr yes. on the enemy carry. In the high elo lobbies, people have started just avoiding using their hex tiles because it's always yeah, a bait. such a trap like to get zephyr or people just position all the assassins right around the hex tiles and just blow up your main carry. Yes. Yes, this is Tio who, who is in the Infernal right now. I don't mind Infernal in the early game. I think it's something people don't sometimes fall into just for like a, a couple rounds when it actually is probably strong. Well, I I like it when there's an Infernal Kiana, right? Because Kiana Especially is, then, yeah. Kiana's an insane unit. She, mm -hmm. She's really good. The, the AoE stun. Um, and if you get a free, basically, Infernal uh, character from that, then heck yeah, go for it early. Especially like in the Woodland Druid package where you want the Diana already anyways, it's, it makes it super strong. Deshai with 100% health right now. I wonder why he's running. He had a really good early game uh, yesterday as well when they, when they started. Let's see. We got Will and Druid. <laughs> That's going to be a good <laughs> early game. Yeah, some Predator potentially as well. We got four Vladimirs on side. A vein that he should definitely sell because from experience, <laughs> <First of> all, <laughs> if you get nine veins, it's still probably one of your worst units. Nine veins, not as good as one Yorick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also leveled, so he, he is going a little bit more aggressive in the early game. Yeah. So here's something, though. Um, a lot of people have talked about how good Ezreal is as a mid-game carry. 
But then it also feels kind of bad to upgrade him and sell him off later because he's three cost and you lose out on gold efficiency. Yeah. Um, do you ever just splash him in? Uh, I love as like if you have Seraph, you always either go Kindred or you go uh, Ezra Israel, 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 um, because his uh, his auto, his um, sorry, his ultimate, he can cast it once between every auto uh, with the Seraph. Yeah, my personal favorite mid game was Ezreal with Seraphs and Ludens. Oh yeah, it felt yeah. super nice. I don't just... think you'll ever lose with that. Yeah, mid -game. <laughs> that's definitely gonna carry you. Yeah, but like you mentioned, like late game when everyone has like the biggest monsters and you're, yeah, you know, he's just like pew pew and doesn't do enough. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the hard thing. He falls off so hard later. Yeah, front lines get really gross late game. Predator with all its three stars, and then the poison package with Mundo and Singed. Uh, even Zed's basically become super obnoxious because there's so many you yeah. need, like, AOE to deal with. All right, I'd say there he's almost definitely going to go transition into Ocean Mages. He already has a Merle Namicon, already has another needlessly large rod. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, what is yet? Close fine. Yeah, Not man, look at his Econ, 50 gold by Krugs. Oh, he did level there. Four level two units as well. Like, Solga Sanks is in such a good spot. All right, I want to see him scout around, see uh, if he looks for any other Ocean Mage players. Because that's that's one of the ones, even Littles, a lot of Littles will, will go for that comp because everyone gives that advice mm -hmm. uh, to a lot of new players. Let's see. The thing I like about Ocean Mage and why I, I feel like it's so consistent too is because you don't need to three star anything. Uh, and a lot of like your carry comes from other parts that aren't ocean, like the, the Vladimir's and the Syndra's, it's just there to kind of get you your mana regen, and then it's other things in the mid to late game that you can be a little bit more flexible with. If you were in Quippo spot, you have a Zyra too, there's a brand in shop. Mm, he's thinking uh, yeah. about it. He's I, holding on to two Nasus and two Veins, so he could probably just sell those and pick up the brand if he doesn't want to lose Econ. Yeah, I feel like a transition, because once you have the brand and he already has a, the two Zyra, not doing it though. Oh, uh, is he thinking he, about lights? He, he had a, a one star Kindred, but I think he likes Shadow a lot. Uh, he, he played Shadow yesterday, and I think I think he's looking to do it again. Yep. Shadow is one of those teams where if you're the only one running it and you can three star your Vigar, your Kindred, your Scion, your Malzahar, all all four of them can be your hyper carry. Ooh, Silk is saying trying to roll down a little bit. Yeah, he was buying a bunch of Kindreds and stuff just to block three costs. I don't think he got too much out of that. He also no. leveled to six there as well, so he dumped about 20 gold into that. He added an Ottoman for Ocean and Warden, but... Uh, yeah. I, I also feel like waiting the little bit extra for seven and then spending a whole bunch, if, if he is, you know, going to go Ocean Mages for, for looking for brands. That Kog'Maw Thief's Glove, trying to get the... <laughs> oh, 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 that Predator! I feel like Predator, one of the th reasons it's the strong, or so strong is because the Predator calculation happens after uh, damage after is dealt. Damage. Yeah, yeah. so you saw the Kog'Maw ult look like it killed him from almost half health, and it's because the Kog'Maw ult damage comes in, and then it checks if he's below 20%. Uh, it feels like one of those changes that I would bet at <laughs> some point they reverse that calculation. Um, at some point during this set's lifetime, I bet that that will happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's so oppressive that it needs to, but it does lead to some really weird looking situations where people get bursted from half health. All right, it sounds like we've got a sneaky interview on stage right now. Let's send it up to Dash and see what's going on. That's right, Kobe, standing by with Sneaky, currently in second position in the finals here for TFT. $50,000 to charity on the line here and picking up this win right here. Sneaky, how are you feeling about your current position? Uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, usually my worst part is the mid game because I kind of don't really understand where I should go with my comps, but... Look right, so the, so the exact place we're in right now. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, well, Carousel, this is a huge decision to make, so I'm going to let you take it in for a second, but I want to know what your kind of what your thought process here. What are we looking to complete? Uh, probably PD, but there's no chain vest, so... Uh, not. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, tier, maybe, recurve. Looks good. I, mean, 
I'm look. I'm like looking. I'm like checking over at the casters to see if they have an opinion on uh, everything you're throwing out there. Uh, looking for somebody to cringe real fast. Let's see what he goes for. He goes for the Giants belt. Uh, so far, we've got in a three Inferno, two Warden. Looks like uh, Assassins might be an option. But what's what's as you say, the transitions mid to late is usually the hardest part for you. What is your current thinking? Where are you gonna go? So I've heard uh, the late game is, uh, you know, Sin, Zed, and Nami battle. So I'm looking to get those. Might be a little far away. Right, a lot less to do with the synergies and more to do with individual pieces. The double Annie pickup, though, that's got to feel pretty good. Only sitting at 19 gold, though. Is Eco a concern? I don't know. <laughs> not an expert, honestly. <laughs> he's not an expert, and that's why he's in the little tournament. All right, I'm going to let you get back to it because you're in solid position to take home that 50K for your charity. Right, guys, back to the desk. All right, thank you, Dash. Currently, we are looking at Bwipo. He finally got his beloved shadows. Mm -hmm. With uh, Seraph on the Kindred, he's in a great spot. If he can't upgrade that Kindred to a level two, like his mid game is really solid because Kindred level two with Seraph is enough to like just dominate. Funnily enough, he played Shadow yesterday and he found a three star Scion before finding a two star Kindred, <laughs> I believe. And it took him forever to hit some of the other Shadow upgrades. Stara went through the exact same thing as well. He had a Scion three yeah. and a Kindred one. Yeah. I don't know, the Kindreds are, are dodging to this tournament. All right, meanwhile, I think I saw a hard commitment to Predator player around there somewhere. So there's at least a couple of Predators. There's the one Ocean Mage, Shadow. So we have a decent amount of diversity. Didn't see... Oh, there's the brand. He actually buys it this time. He gave up on the vein! Ooh, the Kindred. <laughs> now, Kindred two-star, yeah, baby. Now's a good time to kind of chill for a little bit. Yeah, I was bit. about to say. Like, uh, when you want to hyper roll for shadows, level 7 is a really good spot. Level 8 gives you the best odds, but I think it's only like a 2% increase. All right, checking back in on the Shy, who's held the top spot this entire game. It did break the win streak recently, but uh, still with a pretty decent amount of econ that he built up over the game. And, and I like where he's at. He's got Woodland Druid right now, but he didn't hyper roll for it, and he already has the makings of poison on his bench. Setting up for that Singed. It is pretty popular to try and get to uh, get to eight first, try and get better chances at your five costs. And that's kind of what we're talking about, the second lobby of the Littles. Seemingly they had a better idea of how they want to handle mid to late game transitions. Okay, I didn't want to hyper roll for Woodland Druid, but I can always just pick up some other good front line later and swap those out. And like we said, usually happens around stage four. So he's, he's in a pretty good spot. I don't see too much people hyper rolling for Woodland Druids this game because they're only playing for the number one spot and yeah. Woodland Druid will get you to second place, get you to third place. It will very, very rarely get you to first place. Yeah, it's super consistent for climbing the ladder, uh, especially if you're scouting around, but not so great for number one. Wolves actually might be my favorite round of the entire game. Because they it, pop so fast? Because it's early, they pop fast, and then you have a chance of getting so many items. <laughs> and then he gets one tier. <laughs> yeah, unlucky. All right, what did Solo get? The Ocean Mages are in full effect. Oh, oh the that's Nami! So huge. Nami on seven! So many souls. Wow, I got the Yorick, too, if he wants to put in the oh, uh, Inferno oh, Summoner One more brand. Really wants it. You'll see a lot of like high evil. Oh, there's a oh, oh he gets a no, he should lock. He should lock. Uh, back. Yeah, yeah, he's got the Yorick. It, it was also a um, a Yorick in there, yep. and he has an Annie on his bench and a Zyran already. So if he wants to go uh, the uh, the classic Ocean Summoner with uh, a bit of Inferno Splash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just so powerful late game. Uh, Ocean does so much for them. Let's take a look at this battle though. Did the Shy actually get any upgrades after Wolves? He put in the Moon, though. I yeah. think that's the only change. And I think that was a one star before, so I think he managed to upgrade it. <laughs> that Dragon Claw on the Maokai. <laughs> yeah. Maokai with defensive items is pretty brutal to get through. Shy's in great spot. Still has 50 gold left. Tio Feeder, kind of behind the other Ocean Mage player, which I think was Soloka Song. Does have twice his health, but yeah, needs to find a lot of items to actually, or units, excuse me, to transition. That's the benefit of rolling first. Let's see. Yeah, the Diana's probably going to have to come out for Bran later on. Need those items. Yeah, I think two-star Diana, though, is going to do more for your comp right now with Inferno than four Ocean would. 
at, at, since it's a one-star Syndra. Yeah, plus you don't have... Oh, I guess you could put them under the Kindred. Like, you, you need a trash unit to hold items mm -hmm. until, you know, you have your final placement with Brand or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's the number one rule when it comes to using items. You want to use them for, uh, like, in-game power, but you either put it on your worst <laughs> unit or you put it on your best unit. You never want to put yeah. it on your, like, middle of the pack. Am I going to keep this? Maybe I will. And if I keep it... He's not going to be my carry, so it really feels bad to have items on him. So always put it on your worst unit that you know you're going to sell. He delivers a loss to the Shy. Those have been very rare. I think this is only his second loss there. So that summoner pickup was enough to get him the edge. And the Shy is definitely just looking for the, uh, the Singe poison pickup here. Can't wait to transfer into it. He's also holding a lot of crystal, even though he didn't get Skarner upgraded early. I'm surprised he's rolling on seven. I mean, like like Toast saying, it's not a monstrous upgrade, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, he does have a fair amount of one cost units in, I guess. So it's it's actually he's fishing for a number of things with the roll, not just the singe. I think that's one of the most important things when you do roll down is make sure that you have a couple of things you're looking for. If you're just hunting for one thing, it can be really painful. Yeah. Oi. That Woolen Druid on his team is falling off too fast. <laughs> Did you see uh, Blippo's player cam there, too? He's having so much fun uh, <laughs> with his shadows. Just popping off. See if the Shy want, uh, can get some revenge, though, for their 1v1. Because if you get beat in back-to-back -back matches of different games, that that's just like full gamer superiority. <laughs> Ooh, there's a Singe with a, uh, What's a spatula? spatula. It's a little late to really love a spatula, but... Oh, it, it's just straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, because we're, we're in round four already. So you pretty much only have one more chance to scrounge up a bunch of single items before the completed ones start coming through. I don't think Sneaky had a uh, Morel and Omicon yet. I mean, I don't know what components he has, but that could be a, a decent belt pickup. So he goes for the one cost spatula. I really am curious what he's got on the bench then with his items. Let's take a look. Not the best. Oh, this is the shy. Okay. Gets the boat. Oh wow, he has three bows and a belt to work with. Well, there's a late upgrade, upgrade on the Ezreal. Hmm. I don't know if he actually has that clear of a plan then. <laughs> yeah, because unless he's trying to go glacial, but he didn't want the uh, Olaf there, so I doubt it. Ooh, the four Rangers. He does have that twitch. I mean, he's setting up the Glacial Ranger, yeah. or excuse me, the uh, Ranger uh, Crystal with Poison Package, which is, is a pretty nice late game, but... Ranger's really not that wow. popular right now. Clid had another spatula on his bench, so he got a Singed with the Force of Nature on it. That is dream scenario. <laughs> Woodland Predator Druid, and he actually has Ooh. a Poison Package ready to go with the two-star Mundo on his bench. He yeah. just absolutely substitute that in when he gets a chance. This actually, this is one of those moments, even at bottom of the uh, health totem pole, you yeah. can make a really big run. Oh my god. All right. Most important synergy for Singed, Morello Namakon. <laughs> now he needs to find that. Yeah. Well, there's the first Zed of the lobby. Zed. You'll see a lot of these players start picking up the legendaries, the Zeds, the Namis. <laughs> Bwipo's pinging it like, do I want this Zed? What am I doing with this? He, he has summoners, so I think for sure. Yeah. This is Seros would really like the Zed. He's got leveled up electrics here. That's a yeah. three cost volley bear and a bunch of orns on bench. That's too. a three star. Oh, oh, my. Three if he star. gets a Zed. Wow. And he's got and He's only Predator. level six. He can't physically roll a Zed right now. Yeah. He needs to push seven at the bare minimum. Stop yeah. rolling. Yeah, he's so desperate but, for the cog three. Yeah. Yeah. I think the three stars will carry him through, though. I don't know. Zyra, Morello, Namakon. No, it's, it's not going to happen. In the oh, background. No. Oh. We're about to get some eliminations here, then. Yeah, they get one little last chance at life. After the chickens. I think he's going to be baited by the Kog'Maw. He's up pushing level. Yeah. Ah, it's, it's so little money from six to seven, too. It yeah. just feels so bad. It's 32 for 6 to 7, or is that? Yeah, I think, yeah it's yeah. 32. Solga saying 14 health. What are you doing? You're predicting him to do well. 
a little bit of a curse predictions here from yeah, like, we should, uh, I should stop trying all to time. <laughs> I think when it comes to high elo players, they're so used to playing like in a set meta uh, that when they play against like, you know, silvers, gold, plat, everything they know kind of go out the window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can't beat them if they I, know what they're doing. I yeah. always find those uh, excuses the funniest. And it reminds me of uh, Worlds when Double Lift was like, this Alistar is just so crazy. The only reason he could kill me is because it was a terrible move to try and kill me there. And then, he, but you're the one that's dead. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he did find a Nico's help here, but do you use it on the Kogma? Oh, man. I think you he's, should. What's his health? He's, he's at like 22. It's so, yeah, it's so hard to use He can go to else. seven. Think about what to make here. I definitely like the Death Blade over the Bloodthirster. Yeah, and then I might have even saved that for. Oh no, we're already into five. Oh, Not gonna be able to complete. With those shadow. Oh, that oh. kid just hopped away from the mouth right now. That was sick. <laughs> The knockup goes through. Kindred with the Seraphs and Death Cap. Is He's actually take one over? Kindred away from a Kindred 3 as well. I didn't realize he had two Kindreds on board, and Whippo has two on bench. So he, he's actually super close to hitting a three star yeah. Kindred. The uncontested Shadow. We can see where his love of Shadows comes from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you, oh, you see everyone, like, they see Shadow units, they're like, I'm not taking yeah, that. Yeah. That doesn't fit my comp. Ooh, the Shy has dropped really far. He's down to 34 health. Yeah, he's got a very janky Predator setup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the one-star Kogma that you're just like, please give me a Singe so I can get this off my board. Yeah, and I mean, the only like full-ish synergy he has is the four Rangers, which isn't that strong. Yeah. It's getting buff next patch, yep. but... Uh... Oh, is this it for Clit? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, no, Clit's going to drop. Yeah, but post four Shadows. The Reign of Terror continues. And he takes out the Singe with Fawn. Ooh, yeah, Levi. Levi getting out too. Soluka saying, holding at 14 for a while now. Whippo on an eight game win streak. You can tell by his uh, portrait on full fire there. I mean, That's a good feeling. Whippo's killing it. He's in the finals of the <laughs> 1v1 tournament. He's gonna. He's in the good spot here the so day, far. Sometimes you have a good day. He should actually go to the casino after this. <laughs> <I think. laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's the three-star Kindred. Oh. And that's such good items. He's also got the Master Yi already. Yeah, the items on the Kindred, like the Seraph and the Rabadon are the two best items. And then the third item is like, you can go Phantom Dancer, you can go Dragon Claw. You just need him alive. Yeah, some defensive thing. All right. Oh, that Nautilus gets one shot. <laughs> oh, is my Yorick? God. Bop. Who's Bop. next? Bop. Bop. Yeah. And she, like, she's ulting like every two auto attacks, I believe. And he's playing against mages right now. The Dragon Claw is going to go a long way. 1,700. Oh, like, my God. Hop, shoot, hop, shoot. Yep. All right, so Toast, you said uh, sometimes, like, challenger players will have a, a hard time dealing with, uh, you know, random lower rank players. Mm -hmm. But you also said you got on your Smurf account Smurf to do some climbing yesterday. Yeah. What, what's your go-to strategy for people if they want to, like, climb right now? To climb Smurf, I think uh, Hyper Rolling Woodland Druid is always just the best option. You just need to know when to econ and like just maximize the number of times you can roll. Mm -hmm. And, if and not, scout to make sure yeah, no one else is no yeah. doing it. Because uh, lower elos, they don't scout. They just kind of tunnel in on their own strategy. And you look around, and you see three people go for the same strat, and you know they're just going to cannibalize each other. Yeah, I'm really liking Whipple's position. <laughs> He's one away from a Malzahar 3 as well, one away from a Nami 2. Three away from Scion 3. Yeah. He's got the Bash Brothers in front with the double upgraded Scions. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, oh, finally, finally the Shy. Get that Kogma out of yeah. there. Get this other one off my screen, too. <laughs> yeah. There's a Twitch upgrade. He has a little bit of healing cutting in the Twitch, but that's so much Ooh. worse than... I don't know if anyone can singe too this game. Everyone's just picking up singes. I feel like he is being baited in by these rangers super hard. Yeah, he's got yeah. an extra ash over here. You are never getting a three. Well, actually, he's got. Well, so he, he's close he to. Could, he, he, I spoke to Zoom before I saw the other two star ash on board. Yeah, but I think give up on I, Mundo three. I don't know. Well, he's gonna be he might die here. Ooh, he, I, this I think is gonna be it. Oh, yeah, he gets knocked out. So Gasang out as well. We have Sneaky and Whippo. 
Whippo's, and Whippo's day today takes down the shy. You know, probably one of the best individual League of Legends players in the entire world. Then knocking out a bunch of these previous challenger TFT players as well. Ooh, I was talking to Whippo right before he went on. He said his mistake yesterday was pushing level eight instead of just hyper rolling for more shadows. And it looked like he made the adjustment, stayed at level seven, just kept rolling for shadows, and it's gonna pay off for him. I believe uh, Tio Feeder is the last Ocean Mage player in the game right now, uh, yeah. but he's uh, got a pretty good setup. The only problem is that Annie's a one cost right now. Yeah, you look at his synergy, it's like so efficient. Four Ocean, three Mages, only one like extra light synergy not being used. <laughs> that yeah, nice uh, synergy. <laughs> oh god, that Kindred. Yeah, the Dragon's uh, Claw is such a counter to his build. It was even pretty close there. I mean, that, that's why it's so scary. Like, the Ocean Mage package, when it gets this, is so good. But the three-star with the Dragon's Claw. I think now Blippo is trying to save up again to Econ to go to eight, though. Um, it looked like he had, I think he had 20 gold, at least. I don't know what clone board Sneaky had there, but he uh, beat it. It was Teal's. It was Teal's? Okay. So Teal's not in a good spot because he's losing to both players in the game right now. Oh, Sneaky's kept the Diana this entire time. The Inferno's strong. Oh. Hmm. I was also talking to Sneaky. I told him, like, Singe was good, Nami was good. But I don't know if you want to just, <laughs> just blindly <laughs> throw them in, in for, with zero synergy. He's like, got it, checklist. <laughs> yeah. And there is a, a death cap is really nice on Singe too. I mean, we, everyone always talks about the Morel Namicon, but actually uh, the AP as well goes a long way, especially for Singe too. Wow, Warmogs is a really nice upgrade too. Unfortunately, he can't put it on his side. Oh, you're right. Thieves One's already got Thieves Gloves. He could roll one. He could put it on the other one, and I don't know <laughs> how the pop-off works. I think Thieves Glove always takes priority. Got it. Um, Oh. Wow, he's rolling down here for the upper. Oh my wow, god! Wow, in the same shop! Oh wait, it popped off! It popped off! Priority to hey. pop off! That's uh, what I... <laughs> but he's, uh, he puts it back on. <laughs> yeah, back I was going to say, he put the Warmogs on and put the, the damage three. on the, the Malzahar, but this works too. Ooh. He's going for the golds. Where is it? Oh my oh. god! Rolls the E2 on level well, 7. Well, congratulations to Bwipo. Yeah. Uh, Today is his day. I would like to crown the TFT Littles. Luckily, king. he did not get either board to knock them out right now. It's going to actually be between TO Feeder and Sneaky. This is good. Let them have the honor roll fight first. Yeah. Sneaky with two singes on his bench. Ooh, yeah. Your that... advice is paying off. <laughs> well, he found a Cloud Lux as well, I believe. That's Ooh, what that one is. So, real nice. really, really strong Lux. Oh, Sneaky versus Whippo. NA versus you. Oh, yeah, the that's... classic. Come on. Would it be anything else? NA needs to get a win at something. Sneaky's level nine. He hasn't locked that Lux. Sees the Nami. You get, oh! you get so many five costs at level nine, especially yeah. since Whippo's only uh, seven still. Sneaky should be able to go with the Toast strategy. <laughs> five cost units all over the board. He did sell a Singe for the Nami oh. too. It was pretty nice though, because him getting that Nami, there's only uh, 10, I think, yeah. five cost units in the pool. And so he has three. And uh, Whippo's looking for one more, but that's really hard to find at level seven. So that's actually a pretty monstrous upgrade. Uh, I'm not sure it matters though. I'm just looking at this Scion. He's just one-shotting things, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah, same with the, the Kindred. The Kindred. Like, when you have two hyper carries like that... I mean, he's also got the Master the E. Master That's e. two-star, so, like, yeah, he has carries what all over the place. He's cracking up. Cloud, Cloud Lux feels a little useless against... Because yeah. it's so much magic damage. I wonder if finding Mystic and getting Poison in or something could be better. I don't know if Sneaky's comp has the, the room for that, though. I don't know. I, I would like the Yi to miss also, so I, I'll take whatever I could get. I care way more about the three-cost Scion <laughs> and Kindred, I think, though. But I, I'm not sure there's anything Sneaky can find yeah, to, to like dig him out. Yeah, just really committed to his comp right now. Like, he can maybe two, throw in two more Mystics, but... Because he's got the Yi and he's got the Nami, like... The Lux can come out, maybe the Annie comes out, or like the Varus. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I just well, love watching. The Kindred just one-shot everything. Can he make the last stand? It's not gonna happen. No. Uh, coming for the Lux. He's like, He not... will get one more Carousel. Yeah. Like, it's still relatively close. All right, here's what you do for a Bwipo, though. You level up to eight, then sell everything and don't put anything in for the classic <laughs> VM. Exactly. <laughs> I think he could just have the Kindred and the Scion and just have a 2v8. 
Then you lose. <laughs> then you only have two shadow though. You only get right, the you two keep, buff. You keep the four shadow okay, or okay, the okay. five shadow because he has five of them. Th this is this is what Toast is probably best at. I would say is learning how to BM effectively. <laughs> the fine line of BM yeah. is something you have to learn. What's the maximum BM you can get while still winning? I want to see him hit that Malzahar three. I mean, it is very satisfying just to see all of the gold all the units. Golden boys. Mm. Spend your money, Whipo. It's the last round, probably. All right, the calculations. Ooh, I can ooh. see the calculations. The big brain zephyr. We'll see. Check the board. Check the other board. It's gonna. What, Yana, I think it was, or Malphite. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go on the. Oh, oh the yeah. Malzahar. Malzahar. All right. Well, congratulations, Weep <laughs> Weep. <laughs> yep, Whippo. Getting his first win Ooh, of the final day of All Stars. Day. What a day. Uzi's got to be uh, shaking in his boots now. Yeah, Whippo's got everything going for He's him. He's coming today. in hot. And, uh, I, I like it too. You know, he got his strategy. He knows what works for him. It's Shadow. I'm going to play Shadow. And if I get my stuff, I'm going to win. And if I don't, well, whatever. I, I love too just the, the auto balancing of these types of games. As soon as a new build gets popular, when there are broadcast tournaments like this, then you try and go home and use it in, in, uh, in ranked in solo queue or something, and all of a sudden, oh, there are four people in my lobby <laughs> going for shadows. Yeah. It is not good. <laughs> is that better or worse than when there's a tournament like this and like a new assassin pops off in League of Legends, though? Mm. And then everyone goes home and your solo queue is filled with horrible Kiana. <laughs> I, I think this is much better. Yeah, Because I for TFT, I like just doing hipster stuff. And then that just makes it better because if the tournament's going off, then everyone's using that. But yeah, really well played by Buffo. Like that's the foreshadow strategy. You push level seven, you hyper row, trying like three star at least two of them. He three starred two of them, one away from the three star Malzahar. Even gets the mastery. I think he he had five shadow. Yeah, because he had the Vigar too yeah. as well. Wow, like and really good items too. I was gonna say that too. Yeah, yeah. knowing what's best for your comp is super important. All right, now for more on that game, let's check in with the State Farm, Am uh, State Farm Analyst Lounge. I believe that is us. Yeah! Yo, what's up? We're still here! <laughs> nice toss. <laughs> so, back to the analyst. Add the react to our own what, toss. What did you think about the shadows? So, the, the <laughs> items that we were saying, it's really important. Different builds want different items. Not, I mean, just in general, Seraphs is one of the best items on the current patch, but make sure you get it on the right carry and identifying that. As well as the death cap, it is still really, really strong, but Morel and Namacon is worse on Kindred, let's, I would say, and probably worse in Shadow in general, because you're just trying to one-shot stuff for yeah. the most part. You're not really cutting healing. Morel is actually the worst thing to put on Kindred because her ability already comes yeah. with yeah. Uh, the reduction. So really smart by Bipo. Like, he didn't greed for a third offensive item. He's like, I need some defenses on my Kindred, makes Dragon Claw with it, so. Yep, definitely a good job. Covering all bases there. Are you looking forward to the Legends final matchup for Ooh, TFT? The Legends. Towards um, the end of the day? I'm very excited. You're going to cheer on Becca, the <laughs> last hope for NA. Uh, Is she the only one who made it? Yes. What are you and Scar doing? You know, it's... Hafu, Dog, none of them came I through. wanted to be cool and go light, and I got offered seven veins, and you don't say no to seven veins. If you win with, uh, with light also, with lights, yes. then you really get to trash talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, actually, <laughs> let's hear from the winner of the Littles Bracket as Dash is standing by for an interview. Thank you very much, Jen Saab. Whippo, hello again. I'm going to be kind of honest. I'm a little sick of talking to you over this weekend. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but another huge victory for you. Make it a case for MVP of the entire All-Star event. Work, walk me rather through the strategy because you were a few levels down and yet absolutely smacking people there at the end. Um, so uh, my main strat was... I. I didn't have a main strat coming into the tournament, but um, Shadow was something that I felt like was relatively easy to play, and the only thing you need to really look out for is the right item for Kindred. So when I picked up the tier in the first round and then got another tier off the minions, I felt like going Kindred with the Seraphs was a good start. And then I believe off Wolves, um, I high rolled two large rolls, so I was like, all right, th this is a Kindred game. You had all the items you needed, and then of course, for all of those pieces to end up being three-starred in the end meant a pretty dominant victory. But with this victory, I think more importantly, you have secured $50,000, which will go towards protecting tigers, conserving habitats, and raising awareness around uh, uh, tigers and protecting wildlife. So what does that mean for you to have collected this money uh, for that cause? 
Uh, it was difficult to pick something that I was satisfactory with because there were so many good causes. So ultimately, I'm not sure if I'm 100% satisfied with my choice, but ultimately, I believe there was 5,000 options or something. So I just picked something with animals. I feel like everybody on the, world, on the planet can at least relate to animals in a sense and, and wish them well. So uh, on top of that, when I think of a tiger, well, the Bengal tiger is the first one I think of. So I feel like uh, an icon like that is something that should stay on the planet. All of the charities available were good causes, so the money going anywhere is good to say the least. Of course, this is not where your day ends. We already heard the analysts talking about it. You are, are looking to basically c c complete the clean sweep in the 1v1s. I know that Shocks talked a bit about it, so I would rather talk about uh, the, the, the future Legends tournament where $100,000 will be awarded to a charity based on the Legends that win. Do you think that, the, uh, that maybe they could learn from you and Shadow's the way to go to collect 100K? Uh, uh, I heard in the shadows back Xcara like re really low rolled as kindred, so uh, I, I just figured, you know what, if, if someone else low rolled, then maybe the game will give me some favor and let me high roll it. So uh, I'm not sure. If, I think it's a very viable strategy that everyone has to look out for because if there's like only one guy doing shadow, which was the case right now, then once you see that three star Scion, three star kindred, three star Malzahar, Vigar, like it gets really scary really fast. Earth and 1v1 still to go for you, so I'm going to let you go get warmed up for all of that. But once again, congratulations on picking up that money. Back to the desk. Thanks again, Dash. Uh, so we already heard Toast is going to vote with his heart. He's rooting for Becca for the Legends. And Mark, you have had the worst predictions. I'm uh, so stupid. Basically, anti prediction. So I'm really curious what <laughs> yours is. So I'm, I'm predicting eighth place, technically. <laughs> But if you know that your prediction is eighth place, then is it going to undo your uh, sabotage vote? I don't know. Just give me your prediction. So I liked what I saw out of Virus uh, <laughs> okay. on, on the first day. He looked, he looked like he, uh, he was doing really well. So I'll, I'll say Virus. Uh, but like I said, I'm sorry that I just predicted you. Uh, I, but I, I think it's, it'll be a, a really close one because... Like they're saying, you know, first place is all that matters. And we, we did a tournament, Rise of the Elements, where, you know, they had last day, first place was all that mattered. And people went so hard on what they thought was like the highest of high roll strategies. Toast was the first innovator with the, the nine light. Nine lights. Unfortunately, they uh, nerfed yeah. lights so hard that uh, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, he's the one who ruined his own game plan for this tournament. Because he won, he did do well with it in the previous one. But the next tournament, they're going to buff light, and I'm going to come back on top of it. Was one of them dead? Did you get a Z light? Because that is the most funny thing to me. Yeah, Z light is probably one. like the most amazing thing. Like, they keep healing each other. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, we are going to take a quick break. Uh, but before that, we get to head into the next match. Uh, here is today's mic check, which highlights all of the day two action here in Vegas. Baby Faker. <laughs> Baby Faker. That's it. <laughs> the upgrade. I'm here, I'm here. Then W two. Cool, 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 cool. I have W yeah. in two, one. Okay, nice. W. There oh, we go! Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, say yeah. it. Last 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 Okay, no rush, no rush. Lara, Lara. Save your mana. We're coming, we're coming. No. You be jump, jump, you be jump, you be jump, you be jump. Yes. Five seconds, Q. Win, 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 Wow. <laughs> You remember script? <laughs> oh, no. well, I remember. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! So much damage. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> GG. <laughs> Your call is too good. Thank you. I need Ben. <laughs> no! I miss Cannon. 200 gold. Oh, And 15 seals behind. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I do have good items. I think I'm blood. Oh, ah, ah, you're so oh. smart. Okay, okay. Ah, 
Chant goes. I think I could kill you, but I'm not very good. Ow. Nice. <laughs> I'm so clean. Okay. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Babe, Ke uh, Babe Peiko. <laughs> win this. Oh, there you go. Oh, I have nothing. Oh, we got Faker. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay, go, go. Fighting. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, 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 go, go, go. go, go. go, go. Uh, you just survived. Can win? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. There go. <laughs> GG, boys. Uh, uh, GG. Hey, we got him, boys. Do you want to go get that coffee then? Yeah. Whoa. Ow. So you want to go get that coffee then? Yeah, just gonna take my headphones off and uh, we're good. Let's go.